Hi friends, welcome back to that 1870s homestead. And we are prepping another strawberry. We are just prepping the soil. I came out, um, we're not just prepping, we're planting today. Um, and put some all-purpose fertilizer on it uh, a few days ago now. And we are just um, breaking this out. Golly, so many strawberry babies. Um, making, just working that in a little bit. Just, just uh, turning up the first inch or so, just to make it loose and ready for planting seeds. I'm using a new tool today, so stick around. I can't wait to share that with you. Um, and excited to see how that goes. And we're planting our peas. And I know for a fact I do not have enough peas. I thought one of my big bags of seeds that I bought was peas, it was green beans. So I'm gonna, I will have to run to the store and get some more pea seeds, but we'll at least get started. And you guys will know that I'm planting today. It's the 25th of March and I'm excited because I'm not gonna have to water these because we're getting water rain tomorrow. So they'll be fine in the ground. The ground's nice and moist and they'll be fine until time to um, for the, waiting for the rain tomorrow. Uh, but one of the things I want to do is just make sure that this is nice and level. So I'm just working in that fertilizer and then I'll come through with a rake and just make sure it's nice and level. We tilled this garden for the first time last fall because the weeds had just gotten so absolutely out of control. Um, but it's great soil absolutely beautiful and one of the things I want to do is just make sure I give everything the best chance so digging out any big perennial weeds or plants like strawberry plants um, we have creeping Charlie in the garden that's gonna be a pester to keep out of here because the creeping Charlie grows along the fence line we're really close to the fence here so I'm just gonna have to stay on top of that during the gardening season Another strawberry. And I am uh, preparing about a foot, maybe a little bit more, foot wide, past one square foot, because that's what we'll be growing our peas in. All right, so peas you can plant eight every square foot. I'm gonna try a different technique this year versus spreading them out eight per square feet, and I'm going to do a single line per um, row. And I have, this is my new tool I use. It's like a, kind of like a dab, dabber for making seed holes, but I'm just using it as my guide from the middle of the T-post where the trellis is gonna go. I'm kind of making the line, using it, and then coming up here to this one and doing the same thing. So I, if you've followed me any time in my gardening journey, I cannot visually see a straight line at all. So um, if I really, really need a straight line, Todd will come out and uh, draw strings for me. But otherwise, I think this tool will help me and at least, yeah, get a nice straight line. And then I can just drag my furrow and make a really nice straight line to drop my pea seeds in. So I'll be putting four per square foot on this side, four, for, four seeds per square foot on that side, and we'll still get our eight per square foot on both sides of our trellis. That looks good. So what grew here last year was uh, potatoes. Potatoes grew here last year, now I'm planting peas. Um, I don't worry too much about rotational cropping, except for things like um, peas and, um, peas, no, sorry, except for potatoes and tomatoes. Things that carry blight, soil-borne blight in the 
uh, that can be present in the garden. I wouldn't want to continue to plant those type of things um, in the same location. So we're just planting these. Check my depth, one inch deep. So. Okay, this is the bane to my existence in my garden. Creeping Charlie. Oh, it's a quite easy root to pull or weed to pull, but man, is it ever invasive. So invasive. And I think a lot of folks deal with different invasive weeds or grasses in their garden across the growing conditions and whatever yours is just know I appreciate your challenges because <laughs> we have ours too and it's just ever so challenging to manage but I'm just going to get this now section prepped and that was about a hundred peas in that little section that we just planted so um, if you're growing peas I've shared this before that it's amazing how many peas it takes to plant um, in order for you to get a good harvest um, you know like if you're interested in putting up some in your freezer or canning them and uh, you can see I have quite a low spot here so I'm gonna try to rake some of this out to fill in the gap and we got a lot of manure dropped off last fall so we topped all these beds with a good layer of composted cow manure but yeah, I was saying that it takes a lot, a lot of peas to be able to put up. So I never grow anything less than say 300 peas in my garden. And that, mm -hmm, I mean, I'll usually get probably eight freezer bags um, to put up. And that's my preferred method for preservation is in freezer bags. Now what my plan is once the plants start coming up is using a lot of this leaf matter to use as a weed suppressant. Um, because they are so intensely planted, I don't want to um, put this leaf matter on top right now because the, as you can see, it's not exactly um, chipped leaves. If it was more chipped leaves, I know the plants could come through it because there's still full leaves. It might um, suppress some of the plants coming out and act more like a barrier. So once the seedlings emerge, I'll come back and push some of this through and act like a ground cover. Now the variety that I'm growing is mostly this Burpees uh, Organic Sugar Snappy. I grew these last year and they did really well. But if I had enough, where my other seed packets are, Oh, they're up there. Uh, my, I have two favorites. I would say Mr. Big P from Haas Seed Company, Haas Seed and Tool, whatever that company's called, and uh, in my gardener's Lincoln P. Um, what I consider a good growing pea is look at the uh, sugar content ratio. Is it a high sugar yielding pea that's going to make it sweeter? And then how many? Um, peas per pod. So this one on average is about eight peas per pod. So I look for anything that's like that eight to 10 ratio. And this one um, is a really good value for your money. It comes with a, close to 100 seeds per packet. Whereas, and I, no disparaging to Luke at MI Gardener, um, and his seed prices are extremely affordable, but it's only 40 seeds per packet. So, if you're growing a lot, like I am, um, kind of, how, what is your cost per seed? Hopefully this will come up on camera and you can see um, about my spacing. So I've got one here. I'm doing them about every two inches.
And if there's any, there was a lot of wood chip in my garden. If there's any really big pieces of wood chips, I kind of just pull them out of my way. Okay, bird, hi. Jeez, oh, Pete's. Like here's an example of wood chip I would not want to leave. There's nothing for the seed to attach to and my black uh, seedling from coming up or compete for that. So just pull that out. Leave a comment down below. Tell us where you are and what you're planting already out in the garden. This is the very first thing that we planted in our garden for 2024. Uh, right around the corner is potatoes. So potatoes and cabbage will go out next. So very happy to see all the earthworms though. So happy. So many, that's excellent. If you are digging in soil and you're not finding evidence of life, something's wrong. You want 100% uh, what are those movies uh, when they call up for ransom and they're like, I need proof of life. <laughs> uh, don't put all your money into something unless you uh, have proof of life. All right, I got the last little section done. So I don't know what this is about. 20, 24 foot maybe section all in total um, so wish me luck with battling my weeds and uh, so it feels so 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 good to have the first crop planted again after a whole year off gardening um, to be back fully dirted up and ready to go I'm really 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 excited about having just hopefully time again to uh, play in the garden a little bit more this year. And um, I wish you guys luck growing where you are and planting and that we each conquer the own, our own weeds and are successful weeding those out. And I guess I'll be back with you either starting more seeds in the house. Uh, we got tomatoes coming up. We have uh, flowers to be planted, peppers. So lots of things to come yet. This is just the very beginning. And if you're new to gardening and uh, interested in our style of our, or want to learn more about how we garden and our approach Standardly is uh, a no dig approach uh, to gardening. We do raised beds, deep earth beds, and um, have even tried uh, straw bale gardening in the past. That was a lot of fun. Um, last year we did till after an entire year off just to completely reset the garden. And uh, we'll see how it responds this year from a full year of resting Lots of mulch, lots of happy things going on here. I'm seeing the presence of life. It makes me excited. Um, and wish you guys just all the best. I think peas are one of my absolute favorite things to grow. Some people don't like it because the shelling of peas, but it's uh, a peaceful time for me to just sit on the front porch and shell my peas. And I think that's a lot of what gardening is the hard things or the preserving things or the weeding of things if you can find the opportunity and they're not always present I get that I've I can't always be in a in that peaceful frame of mind or to see it as just quiet time but if you can just change your perspective a little bit um, you'll find the joy in it it's there to be had and it is a rich and rewarding experience to grow your own food. So I'll talk to you guys later. 
Um, we have some great videos though on our channel of gardening and planting all the things, harvesting all the things, preserving all the things, and a lot of videos on then what do we make with it? What do we, how do we eat it? How do we consume it in our daily lives? Um, so if you're new to the channel, I'd invite you to subscribe and follow along, and we'll see you guys on the next video. Pretty soon this garden though is gonna go from brown to green, and that's what I look forward to the most. <laughs>